So in this video we're going to talk about appendicitis. Appendicitis is caused when the appendiceal lumen is obstructed. This can occur in young people from lymphoid hyperplasia, sometimes with a preceding viral illness, or in adults with a fecalith or a good old-fashioned poop stone as the source of obstruction. Rarely, a tumor can be the source of obstruction, which usually occurs in adults older than 50. No matter the cause, the obstruction leads to mucus and bacteria buildup, infection and inflammation, as well as edema. This compromises the vascular supply from the appendiceal artery, leading to ischemia, gangrene, and eventually perforation if left untreated. Perforation can go on to cause peritonitis and sepsis, or a mass of inflamed tissue called a phlegmon can surround the ruptured appendix, eventually being walled off into an abscess. Most commonly, the patient will be in their early 20s, although there is a 10% lifetime chance that appendicitis will develop. Pain will start diffusely or in the periumbilical region as the visceral peritoneum is irritated and then it will localize in the right lower quadrant as the somatically innervated parietal peritoneum becomes irritated. The patient will likely also have nausea, vomiting, anorexia, and fever. Some considerations in pregnant patients are that the gravity uterus can push the appendix into the right upper quadrant and inflammation can trigger contractions causing right upper quadrant pain and contractions which could make you think of gallbladder pathology. The elderly and immunocompromised are more likely to present after rupture and they may have altered mental status. On physical exam, the patient will have rebound tenderness over McBurney's point, which is one third of the way between the ASIS and the umbilicus. They will also have obturator, psoas, and Rovsing signs potentially. Labs will show a leukocytosis and a possible hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemia from vomiting and contraction alkalosis. Diagnosis can be made with a right lower quadrant ultrasound or abdominal CT. Make sure a urine pregnancy test is done to rule out pregnancy before radiating a fetus with a CT scan so it doesn't mutate into a superhero. To treat, make the patient NPO, give them IV fluids, and if they have peritoneal signs and hemodynamic instability, or if they have soiled themselves inside of their abdomen, go to the OR emergently for appendectomy and washout. Stable perforated appendicitis normally should undergo non-operative management. This includes making the patient NPO and giving IV fluid resuscitation, as well as starting broad-spectrum antibiotics with particular attention to gram negatives and anaerobes. Drain any abscesses percutaneously and schedule for interval appendectomy once things have cooled down in about six to eight weeks. A non-perforated appendicitis in an otherwise healthy patient should be medically stabilized and taken urgently to surgery. Unhealthy patients can be medically managed as well. Common complications include ileus from inflammation, diffuse peritonitis leading to sepsis, and surgical site infections. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. Remember, if you don't want to miss it, look below and click it.